Hi, welcome everybody to my latest video. And this is really about the basics of millinery and getting started in millinery. I notice a lot of my uh, subscribers and my followers generally tend to be people who are looking to get into millinery, looking to get into making hats and are just starting out. So I thought I would do uh, a video on the basics, materials, etc., etc., and how I, I got started. Now, how I got started actually was that I've always been a hat wearer. I've always worn hats. I worked in the city of London in the 70s and 80s. Always wore a hat to work. Really loved hats. But I've got a big head. So I had to find ways of adjusting them or making my own. Now, I started out with flat pattern hats. So cutting out fabric from a pattern and sewing the hat together. And this is a good way to get started because it gives you an idea of how hats basically are constructed and also it gives you a good standing for when you're making different types of hats further on in your career. So for example, the cap I'm wearing is a flat pattern hat cut out with a pattern and fabric, as is this hat here. So that's another flat pattern hat. So I started out with those and I still make them. I like sewing so uh, at the machine so I can run up a hat quite quickly if I'm doing this method so anyway so I started out with flat pattern hats and then I wanted to move on so of course I looked around to see what I could start with and what was the best way to uh, achieve what I wanted now, of course, starting out in millinery can be expensive. And my advice would be, if you're going to start with something, choose a material that you want to use and make lots of hats with that and familiarise yourself with that. It's no good trying to do felt hats, cinema hats, flat pattern hats, all at the same time, because it, it will become really difficult. So I thought I'd run through the materials first and then we'll talk a little bit further on. Now, of course, there are lots of different types of materials for making hats. And straw has been used for hats for thousands of years because it's easily available in all sorts of forms. And that is what cinema is. People don't realise that cinema is actually a straw. Now, cinnamon is from the abaca plant. I think it's related to a banana. <laughs> and it's woven, machine or by hand. A lot of it is make, made in the Philippines. Now, it comes in flat sheets, normally sold by the meter. And it will come either stiffened or unstiffened. Uh, this is stiffened. You can see it's got a bit of body to it. But you can easily stiffen it. Now, once it becomes wet and pliable, you can stretch it, manipulate it, do all sorts of things with it. So that's straw number one. You can also use sisal straw. And this is a sisal hood. Now, I will put images up of these in close-up. Now, sisal, again... It tends to come unstiffened when you buy a hood or it's only lightly stiffened because the plant fibres themselves are fairly stiff. Now, sisal is coarse. It's quite a coarse straw. It's great for making um, a, a more of a value hat. It's no good for high end, really, unless you're using it with other things. But the nice thing about it is they tend to come a lot in just the natural straw colour and they are so easy to dye to any colour you want. So that's sisal in a hood. Then you've got parasisal. Now this is much finer. This is beautifully uh, woven. It's a nice even fibre and it makes the most beautiful hats, but they're not cheap. They're not cheap to start with. So if you want to buy a parasisal hood like this, you are talking £30 probably for one hood. So bear that in mind. This one's actually a vintage one, which is in excellent condition. I often look for vintage materials because they are beautifully made, very high quality. 
So that's those straws. You can also get other straw like Toyo. Now I haven't got a Toyo hood to show you. Toyo is actually made from wrapped paper. It dyes well, it blocks well, it's very cheap. Um, but it's not a long lasting product. It won't keep, you won't have that hat for years and years and years and years and years. You often see it as uh, hats that you can flat pack for summer holidays or roll up and put in a bag. So those are different types of straws and there are, there are others, but I just thought I'd cover the basic ones that most milliners use. Now moving on to felt. Now felt uh, comes in a variety of ways and it's really got to be at least 100% wool. You cannot use acrylic felt unless you're making a flat pattern hat. Acrylic felt doesn't mould, it doesn't shape, um, it's not heat resistant, so it's not great unless you're using it for decoration or a flat pattern. Now you can buy wool felt flat in sheets and um, again actually this is vintage wool felt but it is still available online you can buy wool felt in various thicknesses right up to about three millimeters which tends to be um, what they call industrial felt and it comes in obviously loads and loads of colors now the good thing about that is you can mold it in small into small shapes um, it's not good for doing huge blocked shapes because it hasn't got any shape to it and of course it is unstiffened so it just comes as the pure wool. So there we have some wool felts in just flat fabric. And then you can buy felts in hoods. Oh, just dropping everything off the table here. Now this is a felt hood, so it's 100% felt and it has already been blocked at the factory into a rough hat shape, but only rough. But it's been moulded under pressure and heat so that it's into a shape ready for you to do something with. And hoods are great uh, as long as you don't want a huge brim, obviously. Now, you can use two hoods together. So you could have part of it for the crown and part of it for the brim. So felt hoods, not terribly expensive. Then you've got capeline, which is again the same thing, but it's larger. So it's been made with a large brim, a capeline. So you've got more leeway there to make a large brimmed hat, something something nice with a big brim on. And again, that's 100% wool. And they're lightly stiffened. Uh, most of the time when you buy wool felt hoods or capelines, they, they're stiff enough to not add stiffener to, but, but it all depends where you get them from and what quality they are. Higher quality is where you get things like mousseline. Now, this is lovely, it looks very furry and it is furry. Now some of you may not want to use this because it's made of wool and rabbit fur. So it's rabbit hair put in with the wool when it's uh, manufactured and it gives this beautiful velvety uh, structure to it. And it is high end and it costs quite a bit to buy. Obviously because there's a lot more in the production of it. You can buy felt printed, you can cut it, you can manipulate it, and, and it's a great product to work with. In fact, sometimes I find it easier than cinema. Although most people tend to start out with cinema because you can make small items fascinators easily enough with cinema. And of course you get onto stiffening products. Um, one of the main stiffening products used in millinery is buckram. It's a closely woven cotton fabric. So it's quite a thick cotton, closely woven, and then it's heavily stiffened with starch. So it makes it very, very stiff. Now, once you wet it and manipulate it, it can be stretched, manipulated, and it makes a very firm base for fabric hats. 
you wouldn't use it with felt unless there was some specific reason and you wouldn't use it with obviously with cinema but you, you would use it with fabrics so that would be the first one now secondly I've got here Paris net now Paris net as you can see is a similar thing but it's net it's very open weave with lots of lots of holes in it it's made almost the same way but it's a different type of weave and again very stiff now this is good if you don't want masses of stiffening and you just want a light stiffening inside it's great for making the body of a turban so you would block this first and then make your turban onto your Paris net we're going to be using this in a later video because my next three videos are going to be talking about making vintage styles from the 40s and 50s and we will be using some Paris net in one of those videos so you'll see how how it's used now to also add stiffening to hats there's wire now the first most um, commonly used wire is cotton wrapped so the wire is wrapped all the way around by machine with cotton you can do it yourself but it takes forever <laughs> and it comes in various thicknesses this is quite a thick a thick one so I might use this for adding um, decoration, a branch with flowers on or some really heavily stiffened structure for something that would flop otherwise. Brim wire tends to be thinner because you don't want the brim to be totally stiff, but you want to be able to manipulate it and bend it and move it. Now, a lot of the time I use what's called brim reed. Now this is a nylon, um, well I'll say wire, but it's not wire. So this is nylon. And I use this a lot for brims and for fascinators and for cinema. A, it's lovely because it's clear, so you can't see it once it's uh, inserted. So if you wanted to make, say, a brim just out of net or chiffon, you wouldn't necessarily see this once it's inside and it keeps a very nice circular shape you can't manipulate it like you can ordinary wire into all sorts of different shapes but it's something i use um, a lot of and then i'm going to move on to petersham or grow grain millinery petersham now the difference between millinery petersham and grow grain is that it has a viscose or cotton content so that you can shape it so that when you iron it you can curve it and curl it and do things with it normal um grow grain or petersham is just made from polyester you'll know that because if you hold a lighter to the end it will melt and that you can't shape it's ideal for just using for decorations or trims on things but you can't shape it you can't shape it around a brim or inside as the sweat band and again, this comes in different widths. Um, they used to be numbered, so it would be like number five, number nine, etc., etc., for the width. But uh, nowadays, people also talk about it in millimeters as well. And of course, it comes in every color under the sun, so you can have a matching, matching color to your hat. <clears throat> and again, you can dye. The white so that you can match it into things if you haven't got uh, the right color although sometimes it's nice to have a contrasting color now the thing about the, all of this is it's expensive if you want to start out and then you start buying ma ma madly buying loads of everything so as I said before if you're going to trial out playing with felt I would suggest you just buy a felt hood and play with it. Don't buy masses of um, buckram and Paris nets, etc. If you're not sure whether you're going to find that that is your mojo and that that's the thing that that you really like making. Now on to blocks. Now blocks, I have a lot of hat blocks, 
But of course, when you're starting out, you realise how expensive these are because they're all handmade and they're made to each size of the head. People often ask why I don't make men's hats. But if you can imagine, you've got women all with all different shapes, sizes, heads. And if you're making men's hats, again, you've got to be able to make them in different sizes. So if I wanted to make a fedora, I'd have to have it in a 58 centimetre, a 69, a 59 centimetre, a 60, a 61. It's a lot of expense. So I don't tend to do that. What I would suggest is, to be honest, when you start out, a dolly block is brilliant. You can do a lot with a dolly block. It, it comes in really handy for all sorts of hat making. And also a plain crown block. Now, if you're going to get a crown block, you want it to be at least 22 inches in circumference. 22 and a half is about the average, but you need it at least 22, because if you buy one that's a 20 or 21, you, you, you can make uh, them slightly bigger but you'll deform the hat if you're trying to stretch it to a larger size. So that's the sort of size I would be looking at getting. 2021 is children's size and, and not very useful. And again, don't go to the other extreme and buy a huge block because you can't reduce as easily as you can increase. So if you buy, say a 24 inch block, and then every hat you want to make is a 22, you're gonna come a cropper. You can buy block stands, but beware, they're not gonna fit every block you've got. If they're made by a particular company, they're made to fit their hat blocks. So normally on the bottom, you've got two finger holes and a hole in the middle for um, a hat block stand. Now you'll see on this one, it wobbles about. It's, it's way too uh, small for this hat block. Oh, and there it's actually printed 22 inches on this one. This is a vintage one. So bear in mind that if you buy a stand, it's not gonna fit every block. If you're buying a stand, it needs to be one that you know is gonna fit your block really. But of course, the good thing is you can stand the block on something in the tomatoes if you like just anything to stabilize it while you're uh, manipulating the fabric there are some good hat block makers still in the uk and in the us and australia and make wonderful blocks when you're looking for blocks as i say this was a vintage one that i bought quite cheaply on eBay. This was a dolly block I bought brand new from Hat Blocks Direct. And I think this stand might be from them. But I bought them from Guy Moore's Brown, etc, etc. But start off with just bases because if you've got a crown block, you can make a brim on a piece of wood or a breadboard. And if you're going to invest a lot of money in blocks, buy blocks that you know are not weirdly shaped and you can only make that one shape. Try and get ones that are standard sort of shapes and sizes so that you've got more leeway to expand what you do with them. So for example, I've got this block and if I wanted to make a pork pie hat, I've got a pork pie block, I would just pin a piece of rope or a piece of pipe around there to make the shape. Um, brim blocks that I've got are double sided so that I can use both sides. So it's always worth bearing in mind because you can be paying anything from 50 pound to 500 pound for a hat block. Look after them, cover them uh, with cling film, which I didn't do in my last video, when you make something on them. Try not to drop them because they do dent and crack. But this is obviously about 50 years old and it's still going strong. So that's talking about the materials. And I hope you've found this interesting and helpful. And if you've got any questions, as always, please, please ask me. And as I said, our next three videos will be talking about vintage styles and how to make them so there's just a quick peek at the end of this video look forward to seeing you
Bye.